almost seems like we release records just, you know, for an excuse to go play live. It seems the record's almost secondary. You know, I mean, we're not the video type of band, you know? I mean, that's not, that's not how we promote ourselves. We promote ourselves doing live shows, you know? The old school way, <laughs> before MTV. <laughs> So how did you guys finally feel like getting out of the restless contract to sign up with A&M? How do we feel? Yeah. Relieved, very relieved. Ran around kissing babies, <laughs> people we didn't even know. Yeah, I mean that was like, a, you know, it was really hard for us. It was like we threw away four years. I mean, we were working, 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 and they were doing nothing. So I mean, we were pretty relieved to get out of that deal. Yeah. It's like talking about your ex-girlfriend. Well, you know, we were having some troubles. <laughs> now I get along quite cordial with her. <laughs> but with yeah. your new new girlfriend, are there certain things that you want up front? The sex is a lot better. <laughs> <laughs> it's more of a lasting relationship. <laughs> she looks a lot better. Yeah. When you were out there, touring around, and you've been doing it now for seven years, do you find yourselves returning to those pockets of support, those those individuals that become, uh, you know, hardcore fans of the Doughboys? Yeah, they become special, you know? I mean, it, they've always been special, but now it's even more because they're, they're proud of us. It's like, before they'd come to our gigs and it'd be like them and their buddies, and they're like going, this is a great band, I wish people would be here. And now we go and there's a lot of people, and they're there going, you know, great. So they usually make it to the front, too, yeah. which is pretty cool. Yeah. So you can stare right down at them. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I remember you. <laughs> the last time we played in Quebec City, we were playing. I remember we were, we were playing, I look over, I see Jonathan, and everything's all right. And then I look over again and Jonathan's gone, and some guy ran by a stage dive and caught the end of his guitar and pulled him head first into the audience. Yeah, I hit a pole. Too. Yeah, I hit a pole. It was just mayhem, but Quebec's great. Make me feel pretty, so I like to think of us as punk music, but that's yeah. more of the way we think. It's an uh, attitude, you know? Yeah. I mean, and yeah, we got that attitude still, so I don't I mean, I guess we are a punk rock band. Yeah, we listen to a band, other bands that are supposed punk rock bands, so, you know, I guess we are. We don't want to be like, oh, we're a cool alternative band, you know? Yeah. We don't want to be elitist about it at all, you know? We want absolutely everybody, you know? I don't understand alternative bands that just want to have certain portions listen to their music. I think you know? it looks. I mean, how can you be selective about exactly, it? Exactly, and, and I think that looks bad on them, even you know, like trying to, oh, uh, you know, that guy can't listen to our record. His hair is too long. Like, give me a break. I've had this flasher for years. My grandma gave me this for Christmas. So I don't know. You know, what? it's funny because I look at people in plaid. I think of like. I think of like northern Quebec French guys, you know, like chopping trees or something. I think of Joey Shithead in DOA, you know? And all of a sudden, like, Joey Shithead should be the king of grunge, I figure. Yeah, man, totally. Utopco and Scarborough as a kid, like, yeah. those are the people that used to beat you up when you were a punk rocker yeah. or whatever. Why are you wearing big Kodiaks and lumberjack jackets? I mean, yeah. that was, I, that's why I find it so bizarre that it's on walkways in Paris. Yeah, now, you turn you know? on fashion TV and they're wearing. You finally, like, Canada's finally got a culture and it's growing. <laughs>